Today on Nation, the window cleaner podcast, we're talking about janitorial. Yes, it's not window cleaning, but it's a great add-on. It's something that kind of just rolls. There's frequency to it. It may be for you. It may not be for you, but either way, stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you're here. What's up? Hey, uh, you, by the way, are one of the elite out there. Just so you know, you just tuning into this, it makes you way on a whole other level than everybody around you that doesn't. I mean, this is just your research. You're putting this into your business. Don't think that this is uh, being left by the wayside, all the effort you're putting in to further your knowledge, learn about your industry, and uh, just make a killing out there. You are going to be smarter every single time that you do any research in your industry than the next guy who's never done any. So I just want to say that. Secondly, I want to say, if it's your first time here, have a look around. I am a rep, a sales rep product specialist, senior account specialist <laughs> with uh, windowcleaner.com. Uh, pressure washing, window cleaning supplies, we have it all. Please let me be your rep. I want to be your rep. My number directs 862 312 20 Two, six, save that number. Even if you're not buying anything right now, save it. 862-312-2026. I drone on about this every week, but I am a rep. This is how I make my cheddar. So if you want to say thanks for the podcast, if you want to just contribute back to me somehow, some way, like a virtual high five, all you need to do is order supplies through me, big or small. It doesn't matter. I want to put them all in, all of them. And a lot of you guys... Uh, are super, super loyal, and that is absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. At the end of this show, I'm going to give you a code for 5% off your total order if you order through me. So stay tuned through the whole show, would you? That'd be awesome. Thanks. A uh, little bit of difference here. If you're listening to this, I am right now wearing sleeves. Look at that. I'm wearing sleeves. I haven't worn sleeves since like February. But uh, it's a little on the chilly side. Um, I'm not going to tell you what my kind of chilly is. But uh, I was just chilly. I had, a, I, had, I had a chill, so I had to put on sleeves. That's the breaking story here today. Uh, but that just means that the weather is starting to cool down. Hopefully, you guys are having an epic year. Epic winter will be right around the corner. But hopefully, your fall is going to be just as amazing. Um, by the way, today we're going to, every week we want to talk about something that we want to start a conversation of. I want to know your growth numbers down below. If you're watching on YouTube or you're just listening, go to YouTube, uh, comment, and tell me what your growth numbers are this year. If it's positive or negative, what your total percentage growth is. And I want to know. Not what you're going to do. So you're not going to do 250% unless you're doing, you know, 250% more. If you're doing really 250% of last year, then that's 150%. Put it down there. I want to know. Uh, yes, your numbers aren't going to be that big. I just threw that number out there. But uh, hopefully it's all going great. But either way, janitorial is a pretty great love-hate. We'll call it love-hate. It's a pretty great add-on for building your business. Now, for the most part, I wouldn't ever have my window cleaners or pressure washers doing the cleaning unless they requested it. Because it's a lot, right? You add it on. There's a lot of pros and cons to cleaning in general. Um, janitorial, I'm talking commercial janitorial. If you want to start houses, that's for another episode. I didn't do houses. I never wanted to kind of get into that. Uh, I may have, but it's a different time of day. Uh, janitorial on the commercial side usually starts at like 6 at night, right? At work overnight, you are going to start when everything is closed, clean, so that when they get back in the next day, the place is amazing, spotless, right? Now, I know we've talked a bunch also about not being a jack of all trades and a master of none, but this works in the wheelhouse. It all comes down to property managers. Property managers, if you aren't doing commercial work now, property managers are, they're gold for us. They are gold. A property manager manages properties, plural. So for the most part, they have multiple properties. 
and the properties are so big they have somebody manage them. So they're great accounts to have. And if you can get into bed with one of these property managers, you're going to get work and it's just going to be there. You just let them know how you, um, you know, you're there for them in every beck and call and uh, they're going to love you. But we'll, we'll talk about that in a second. But janitorial in the first place is on the commercial side, pretty simple. It is, you know, whatever they request, but usually it's running, you know, a vacuum on the carpeted surfaces, mopping the non-carpeted surfaces, uh, doing the bathrooms. There's usually common bathrooms, that kind of thing. There's a lot of different uh, locations, a lot of different needs in the janitorial side of it. Um, but that's where doing bids in general comes into play. Uh, bidding janitorial is super, um, super easy for the most part because after your duties are made, you then can tailor things into how much time or when they're coming. So different scheduling in the uh, um, janitorial side of things is if if we had a cleaner, um, not show up, I don't know, this is going on in my throat. Uh, if we had a cleaner that uh, needed to take the day off or something and, and nobody else filled in and I had to fill in, I'm going to spend like 15 or 20 minutes. I know exactly what I could do real quick to make the property look great and what they needed. And I know it's going to go back to being like deep clean the next day. Now, I wouldn't recommend that, but you know how business is. I'm not going to spend eight, nine, ten hours on my normal and then go and do that at night for another four hours. But here's a little bit of a breakdown. Should you do janitorial? Should you do you? Should you do janitorial? Say that five times fast. But that's up to you. You can do it or not, but it's something to think about. I'm glad you're here, so let's talk about it. Um, the pros and cons to janitorial are this. Pro, it is a frequency. More frequency than any other service you'll ever offer is janitorial because you will have it every single night. Well, for the most part. Some places are only once a week. Some. Most of them and the bigger places are going to be every night. That is awesome. Now, the con that comes with that is you may be making $65 an hour window cleaning. You're not making $65 doing cleaning. If you're doing janitorial and you're making $65 an hour, comment down below and I want to give you a uh, YouTube thumbs up, but it's not happening. Uh, for the most part, it is a lot less, but the benefits to it are the frequencies there so it makes it worth it and check your state because I'm not a uh, tax guy or I don't know where you live or if I'm right in all states, but a lot of times cleaning staff can be 1099. Now 1099 employees are a lot less money than non-1099 employees. There's a lot of restrictions that come into that. Go ahead and look into that. Mostly for window cleaning, you can't have that. You can't have that for pressure washing. You can't have it for window cleaning because you're telling them, hey, show up at nine. With cleaning, you say, hey, this job has to be done between 6 p.m. and 6 a.m. Get it done, right? Uh, we'll talk about cleaning supplies, but you're not providing that. You're not providing them with a car. They don't even need to be logoed and lettered if you don't want. They could be, but, you know, check again. So 1099 employees are a lot less. Now, I had a job. One of my, so we had uh, pretty, we had about eight hours of nightly janitorial-ish. About. Yeah, about eight, um, which was great, right? They actually happened to be like three buildings down too. So the, uh, we had a couple different people who did cleaning, but they would go to the first one and they could actually start it at three. And then the next one they would start after six. Um, so it actually worked out beautifully because from three to like 10 or what? Yeah, about three to 10, three to something along those lines, depending on how long it took us. Um, they would be cleaning right there. When she was all done, she'd get in the car and drive right to the next place. Um, and those were just two of the properties that we did. We did a few other ones too, but those two were one person staff. So they had seven hours a day, every single day, five days a week. They didn't work on the weekends. They didn't clean on the weekends. Um, it, it just never really came up. Office buildings are always closed. The other one was a mid rise. So it was a personal, like a condo kind of complex where there was, um, not even condos. Yeah, I guess they were condos. Anyway, there's common areas. Had to be done. So there was a lot of benefits to that. 
those same property managers on those particular properties allowed us to also have the windows and the pressure washing. We did the garage cleaning, we did dumpster pads, we did absolutely everything in our wheelhouse for those property managers because they loved us. And because we did everything they asked. But on those properties, so if you were to work on those properties, again, bidding is all separate, but say you paid somebody $15 an hour to do those, but you made $25 an hour, you're making $10 an hour profit because there is no extra normal you know, 38% on top. So there's a lot of ways to kind of word that and where you're at. But $25 to $35 an hour is really where that commercial side of it is. I think 35 is on the high end uh, for sure. But again, if you're doing janitorial, comment down below. Hopefully you guys got some gravy accounts, but not all of them are doing that great. Um, but there's a pro. First and foremost, frequency. You're making money on top. It's $10 an hour every single hour that somebody is there. We'll say again, even numbers that you're making and it's frequency. So that means you can almost guarantee that. Obviously you could lose a job, but you can guarantee five days a week you're making X amount, right? So you're making say $80 a day on that one crew or that one person um, every single day, right? Not bad, adding 400 bucks for the week um, that you're just always getting an extra $400. So when you think about um, that, it's not too shabby. One of the cons is that um, you get paid once a month. So you're floating payroll regularly and then you're getting paid once a month which isn't a bad thing. Obviously, the stronger a company you are, the healthier you are, the more you'll be able to do that kind of thing, but that's one of the downsides. Once a month, you get a fatty check, but it's to pay yourself back for all the payroll you paid and then your profits on top of it. Uh, another con is, like I was saying before, is if your uh, person and any of your crews, if it's more than one crew that happens to leave at one time, then you're really SOL. Uh, but a lot of times you're able to kind of give jobs to the other people and things. If you're running seven hours, eight hours, whatever, sometimes maybe somebody wants to pick up a couple extra hours. But if they don't, guess who's doing it? Yeah, it's you. You're going to be the fall guy to do the cleaning at these projects um, if it doesn't happen. Here's the big kind of downfall to that. You're like, oh, it's no big deal once in a while, right? Sort of, yeah. So if somebody leaves and they just quit, you're then SOL until you get somebody new there, which is always a little bit more tricky. Janitorial staff, there's a lot more people that will, it, it seems easier to get that. Anybody can kind of do the stuff that they need. They just need to be de detail orientated. Um, but you're the one doing that. Now, on the downside to that, again, is you've already worked all day. Now you got to work more. Like I was saying, it's just not super awesome by any means. Uh, also, a cleaning staff, they want vacation. So who are you having cleaned for that vacation time? Maybe it is you, but then are you going to be not doing your other duties because you're doing this? So something definitely to think about for sure. Um, one of the other downfalls that I have to say is a con is an emergency call. Um, I've gotten those Sit back. We're gonna. I'm gonna tell you a story. This is the grossest and worst story that's happened to me, ever. But one of my contracts uh, called me on the fourth of July, and uh, I have their numbers saved by name in my phone, so I could see if somebody's. They're calling. I'm gonna answer, even if I got food in my mouth. I'm answering. Um, again, these property managers send you tens and tens of thousands of dollars a year. I mean, high five. I could have literally dropped everything else and still made a great living just with property managers. You know. In, in doing what they do. But uh, he said, hey, we opened up our building on the 4th of July for the parade to a few select people who have keys. We allowed them to go in there. Well, somebody got in one of the doors and all of the bathrooms there are locked because again, you have to, when you're in the building, it's the it's a security thing. The bathrooms are locked from the outside and the inside you could just leave. But somebody had to, we'll say facilitate got to the bathrooms, realized the doors were locked, they couldn't get in, couldn't make it all the way back down, so got down, the bathrooms are on the third floor, they made it to the second floor stairwell, and um, they used that as the bathroom. And they said the whole building smells like somebody didn't make it, and uh, everything is reopening up tomorrow, because the uh, it was 
the 4th of July that year fell on a Wednesday. So Thursday, building was back open. We were going to clean on that night because nobody would be in the building normally. And I'm not going to have my cleaning, my staff do the stuff I wouldn't do, really. I mean, when it's really, really gnarly, I want to do it because not only does it show them that you're willing to do the bad stuff, but also shows them that you're willing to not give them the crap, right? So I leave my festivities to drive all the way to the other side of town to let myself in and uh, proceed to clean. Yeah, it was bad. It was it was bad and it ruined my uh, 4th of July for a couple hours as I was disinfecting and everything else. But guess what? I did charge an emergency price. He would have paid me anything I needed. I didn't go crazy, just a little bit for my time. But that guy knew I had his back, knew I had his back. But when they call with an emergency service, hopefully it's not that bad. But if they do have a big issue, then um, a side note to that is that you're going to be called on that. So there's a lot of pros and cons to kind of check frequency, money, stability, um, adding uh, other services because you do that. There's a lot of really pros, and I still love janitorial, um, but those are the pros and cons. Um, but back to the property manager, having property managers that know that you're going to do everything for them mean that they're going to give you everything. A property manager's job is to do everything in a building, if you didn't know. Basically, the owners of the building, they say, hey, here's our building at 123 Fake Street. You're going to be a property manager for it. They usually can bring it to an organization that's a property management company or they have an on-site one. Their job then is to do everything from a bulb is out, electrical, plumbing, groundskeeping, uh, building maintenance, Absolutely everything in the building is done by this guy. So he has to do a lot. Uh, obviously, a lot of them sub everything out because he's not going to be doing electrical uh, on a building. And, um, you know, sometimes you got to hire that stuff out. But the more services that you can do is the less services they have to do. The more you can take off their plate. That's huge for them. They love that. They love that. And they're going to send you everything they can because then they know it's going to be nice and easy. They know that if they call me, it gets done. They know that they can call me my once a month and yell at me and they're good. And that's what property managers are. They're just really nice to get a bunch of different properties. And usually property managers have multiple buildings, usually have multiple buildings, which is also nice because when you do one, they send you all of them and they send you all the window cleaning and all the pressure washing and all the concrete and all the janitorial, even the snow removal, if you're doing that on all of their buildings, it's really, really pretty nice. But anyway, that's property managers. If you're not getting uh, work with property managers, go and get property managers. They are awesome to deal with. Definitely, definitely do that. Um, but uh, property managers are the way that you're going to get into a building. You have to find a property management company um, is an easy way and say, hey, uh, I am Jersey with XYZ. We're do uh, commercial janitorial. We'd love to give you bids on some of your properties. This is what we do. And I list everything out and I try to get everything. And the reason is, is the um, uh, property manage managers, their entire job is to then find somebody if they're not, somebody else isn't doing the right work, right? So you getting in is sometimes simple if you can go there. You're going to have to do on-site bids. You can't do everything over the phone for that for sure. But you want to get a nice uh, list of duties. And this is what mainly the duties entail. You have carpet which has to be uh, used with a vac vacuum that has a brush. Um, so like, uh, say, a Auric 8-pound, uh, one of those ones. I forget what they're called. We run Power Flights. Power Flight's a great company. But that style vacuum. That style vacuum doesn't work on hard services. That is where you use a backpack vacuum because those don't have brushes. They just suck things up and have like a shop vac attachment and you're able to get up to the edges. You don't need to have a brush but now you have two different vacuums. Now, if you have long hallways with carpet, now you need to get a hallway vacuum. Those are very wide. You can get them in 36 inch, giant, big commercial vacuums to do large. You just walk down one way and walk back the way. If you use one of the little ones, you're going eh, 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 and it takes you 40 years to get down there, I'm telling you. But this is all equipment that you need to have. Now, also are the bathrooms. If there's bathrooms, there is also 
cleaning chemicals that go for your bathrooms. And if you're doing full bathroom sanitation, that's a whole nother ball ball game, but you're gonna have to do some mopping. So now you're gonna need to have your mop, your bucket, all that fun stuff. Now this is all stuff that you're gonna be supplying because it's your equipment. If they have it on site, awesome, but you can't go in and go, hey, I'd love to clean your place. I need you to buy all this stuff. Very seldom does that happen. So you're gonna need all of those things. The parts that I always had the um, companies pay for that I did work for was we call them paper products, uh, paper products and cleaning products. So if you go and you get toilet paper for the bathrooms and a paper towel for the bathrooms and soap for the bathrooms and um, maybe you have uh, sanitary needs or toilet seat covers or whatever, that is on you. Go to, uh, if you have a Gordon food service or a uh, Sam's Club, they all have this stuff. But now that's what I'm gonna charge them for. So they're gonna get a bill and they're gonna get that. And that bill that has the price of what all that is, usually just a pass through. If you're charging, charge them an extra 10% on it because you had to go get it. But um, that is a separate bill. So remember that. Let them know they're paying for pro paper products and a ballpark paper product price would be probably pretty good. But that is your pricing. That's how it kind of sets up. You're also going to do high dusting and then all the other stuff that is done. You are going to figure out what it takes per day and then say once a month they need a back hallway done or once a month they need the stairs mopped or once a month they need high dusting done. Those are what you're going to do and separate that task. Basically, you say, okay, so for the vacuuming and everything I'm going to do daily, it's going to add, I'm going to do be there for four hours. To do that or one staff member will be there for four hours if you are doing a bunch of them run two staff members you can fill more time um, but that's how long it's gonna be four hours now once a month all the extra stuff that you want me to do once a month is gonna add another we'll say four hours so what you're doing is four hours a day times your you know monthly whatever your, your days would be five weeks five days and then the extra four hours would be added in that because you're going to give them a monthly price. Now, um, what you can do is always say a uh, weekly price because it is lower and then they can f figure it out. I always say, okay, it'll be, you know, uh, 400 um, a, a week, uh, which creates 1600 a month, blah, blah, blah. That's kind of what I'm going to say. That's your pricing. Now, anything that's extra and above or beyond you talk about and jump off that, I've done bank drive up like canopies and like just the random things were like, hey, this isn't looking good. Can you do that? Yes, but I'm gonna bid that all on the property. Once you have that, write out a little agreement just so everybody knows what's getting done and then you can make a spreadsheet so that your cleaning people have a clipboard and they can go through and check off everything that gets done every single day so they know what needs to get done and nothing's getting missed. Now, with all that being said, you will get yelled at about once a month, hey, that back stairway is looking like crap. Yep, remember, we only do that once a month. We'll make sure to get it done tonight. Okay, well, you know, just keep an eye on it. It's a property manager thing. I don't know. I feel like property managers, especially in janitorial, maybe not once a month, maybe once every quarter, I get a call and they're like, this looks like, oh, and then you show up and you're like, they just have to yell at somebody and you do a bunch of services. I feel like that. They're doing their job then if they do that. So I jump off the bridge every single time or not jump off the opportunity not the bridge i want to jump off the bridge but jump off the uh the opportunity to say hey uh yeah absolutely we're gonna make sure to spend a little extra time there tonight and make sure all that's done for you sorry uh, you had to call usually they don't care the next day they're fine but that's kind of how it goes once you do your uh normal duties every single month you're gonna once a month send in their check now or uh, their bill. And once a month, what I would do is I would submit the bill 15 days prior to when I wanted to get paid. So I would switch it out so that once a month, I'm not getting like everything at once. What I would do is I would uh, send out uh, half of my janitorial on the 15th and half of it on the 1st, I would send out the bill. Because it does take about two weeks to get your stuff back. So the 15th would get paid by the 1st and the 1st would get paid by the 15th. So that would always have some kind of money rolling in. Same thing works on a weekly schedule is week one, you send out this one, week two, you send out this one so that every week you're getting a janitorial check coming in. It's nice, it makes it a little bit easier to kind of do all of it. So you're not getting like once a month, you get a mailbox full of like 10 grand in checks. That's not bad, but you floated it the rest of the month, right? Diversify, man. 
uh, put it out there. One other thing that I have to say about janitorial, that I have to say about janitorial, is that janitorial has to be called up regularly, in my opinion. I want to make sure that people know that I'm there for them. I want to call up maybe once a month and just say, hey, uh, uh, Bill, how are you? Uh, this is Jersey with XYZ. I just wanted to call and make sure everything's been looking good over there for you. Oh, yeah, yeah, no complaints. No one's going to say it looks good. But they're going to say, oh, no complaints. Well, is there anything else that we can do for you? Anything you need added on? Remember, we do window cleaning, pressure washing, blah, 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 blah. No, no, nothing right now. I think we're set on it. Okay, awesome. Well, if it ever comes up, let me know. Oh, one other thing. We also do snow removal. I'd love to give you a bed and see if we could be more competitive than the company you're using now. Oh, well, yeah, it doesn't hurt to get a bid. That's my favorite line. Throw that out there. You're then upselling a person who already knows you're in the building. They already know you're trusted. You've been there overnight. You've done all that, right? It's uh, really pretty beneficial to kind of add all that. Now, speaking of being there when no one else is overnight, is there some liabilities that you have to take uh, to be in the cleaning world? Now, some companies require you to be bonded, Bonded is basically uh, insurance on the person. So like your cleaning person's name is Julie. Julie has to be bonded, meaning uh, if Julie does something, the bonding will pay for what Julie does, not just the insurance side of it. Um, it also helps doing background checks and things like that, but you work on that with the property manager. Is there liability? Yes, you have to still have uh, liability and make sure that janitorial goes under your normal, which janitorial is like the lowest you know, liability pricing that you can get. So it's certainly able to be added on, but make sure that it is added on to your window cleaning policy so that it's worded right so that you're covered. But just like anything, people are letting you in their building. They want to make sure that you are covered with insurance. They want to make sure that they get their uh, certificates before you start. And that's all in the bidding process. When I do a bid, I'm going to bid for everything I think they want. I'm going to bid for everything I think they want once a month. And I'm going to give them my insurance docs. I'm going to give them background checks on my employees if they have them uh, on file. I'm going to have uh, drug tests. Uh, if those are results are on file, I'm going to give those. I'm also going to give uh, any certificates, organizations I'm part of, BBBs, reviews. I'm going to bound them like, hey, I'm not just going to write this down. Hey, the price is going to be $1,000. Oh, okay, I'll think about it. No. The price is going to be $1,000 and here's documentation and everything else that you need. Because guess who looks better? The guy who gives them everything or the guy who gives them nothing and writes it on the back of a business card? Right, exactly. So that's why I do it that way. And they're going to want it anyway, so make sure to write it. Now, with those staff, they're going to have keys and with keys is its own kind of liability. But here's another word of wisdom if you're doing janitorial in any property that's locked property, get two keys you get one the cleaning staff gets one why i can tell you how many times i had to run across town because somebody locked themselves out no security um procedures there no alarms and things like that we had buildings that if the door was left open for more than 10 seconds an alarm a silent alarm was tripped we had the cops called a couple times um you know uh, know if there's any type of issues that way um that just, you have to know that stuff for these buildings. So those are a couple things to look forward to. Uh, janitorial is awesome and it's a great add-on. So I think you should try it even if it's on a small scale, especially if you got somebody you think you'd be great in that role. Um, talk to him about pay, talk to him about what you're going to do and uh, try to get a janitorial job. Think about it. Even if you did four hours and you worked at the same pay scale that I was talking about, paid somebody 15 bucks an hour, but you made 10 bucks an hour, that means that those four hours every day, you're going to make an extra $40 in your pocket for doing nothing but writing an invoice out and covering the pain in the butt when somebody doesn't show up. So not bad. Thank you for the idea. By the way, this uh, podcast uh, was brought up by um, somebody uh, via text. And I want to say that I would give you a quick shout out, but every name that I had, if you noticed in the beginning of this, and I didn't give shout outs, they were erased on my like bullet point sheet. On my computer, I have like a sheet that just has like a bullet point of different things. And I always write the names down and uh, I didn't. I did, but they somehow didn't transfer. So I'm sorry, but you know who you are. Thank you so much for the uh, idea. And if you have an idea 
for a podcast. Send it over. Even if it's a dumb idea, I want to hear it. My number is 862-312-2026. Shoot it to my, you could text that number. Just text me. Be like, yo, podcast idea. Because you know something, after two years, it's very hard to think of more podcasts. And also, if you want to see me um, talk with somebody on one of the podcasts, uh, do let me know. I haven't done some in a while, but uh, I'm going to be reaching out to a couple other uh, creators and uh, doing some, uh, doing some, um, what, not interviews, I guess, talks with other people. But anyway, again, I am a um, sales rep for Window Cleaning Resource. It is the only way that I make money anymore. I sold my business as of uh, last month. So, uh, yeah, if you want to contribute, if you were like, hey, this dude is all right, maybe I did learn a thing or two, or just maybe I want to help him out either way, let me put your orders in. That would be absolutely epic. Again, 862-312-2026. This week's code is, we'll just say janitorial. It'll be easy. Janitorial is this week's code. If you tell me that or you text it to me, you get 5% off your order. Now, a lot of you shop all night. Make sure you're logged in at windowcleaner.com. You're logged in. You uh, put everything in your cart, and then in the morning or overnight, you're like, yo, Jersey, my cart is good. Put it in. Code word janitorial, and my address is the same card ending in one, two, three, four. If you tell me all that, I'm going to come in and be like, yo, listen, I try to work all the time, but I usually don't respond back until 10 a.m., and the reason is, is because that's when I go grocery shopping and uh, go to the gym and I do all my stuff in the morning so that I can be back in front of my computer from 10 a.m. until 11 p.m. Now, 5 to 11, again, I don't usually answer, so text me. I do still text, but the uh, phone's changed the way it works. Text me. Just text me all over. Texting is so much easier if you are a texter. But anyway, that's enough babbling for me. Thank you so much for watching. You guys are awesome. Uh, we are keep moving up on the ranks and... Uh, we are actually in the uh, uh, top 1,000, 1,200 in podcasts in the entire country for uh, business related, which is a lot, but it sounds kind of cool, right? Yeah. But anyway, uh, thanks for checking us out, guys. And if you have any other questions, let me know. If you need any help in business, please do call me, text me, or shoot me an email, jersey at windowcleaner.com. Go get yourself some janitorial accounts. Let me know how it goes. Tell me down below what you're doing. Gross increase this year. And until next week, go out there and be epic.